Please welcome Paul Bartels. Thank you. <laughs> Fifty years ago, when I was a teenager, way back in the 60s, I got a poster. A blue poster with the moon and with the text, the sky is the limit. It was the 60s. There, wo there were no limits. Everything was visible, wasn't it? It was the Green Revolution, the Sexual Revolution. Uh, we got the Beatles, freedom. We were bursting of abundance. But the chemical pollution was appearing. And as an rower, I was capsized, I capsized in the River Rhine. And I had to go directly to the doctor because of the diseases in that dead water. It was polluted without any oxygen left. And of course, groups became active, not only there and in the Netherlands, worldwide. And the first alarm bells were rung, uh, and the Club of Rome is well known for that. And the Club of Rome was a group of world citizens concerned about the limits in our resources of Mother Earth. And in 1972, they published a report, The Limits to Growth. And they forecasted that in 2030, half of the available resources would be used. Now, that was a summons for moral and social responsibility. And as a young man has felt that as a driver to study food technology, using physics instead of chemicals. And my mission became good food for all in respect of Mother Earth. Okay. And now I'm standing here in front of you. It's TEDx Arnhem 2015. Okay. So I'm looking back into that 40 years. And I'd like to share with you what I've learned. I had also got my philosophy in relation to food safety, to food security. And that food should and there's still not enough food. Yeah. In the time of the report, in 1972, we got 4 billion people. Now we have 7 billion people. And in 2030, we have 8.3 billion people. How are we going to feed them? Creating more food, more production. There are limits to the resource of Mother Earth. Just think about fresh water, a real problem. So perhaps there are other possibilities. Because uh, perhaps there is enough food. But we are wasting a lot. One third of the food production in the world is wasted. 1.3 billion tons of food are wasted. So would that be enough to feed 1.3 billion of people? <laughs> in 2030, additionally. Yeah. Do you know how much a Dutch consumer is wasting every year, is throwing away of food, good food in his waste bin? Do you know? 50 kilograms, one kilo per week per person. And I'm not eating one kilo of food per day. Imagine. And 
And of course, you can do something about that, huh? of course. You as a consumer can take your responsibility and of course, it will become better. And that's happening. Little by little, we are doing better. Yeah? As also the River Rhine now has clean water. For the countries around the equator, things are different. The story is different. Food waste happens there just after the harvest. Ah. Because they don't have the technology. They don't have the logistics, they don't have the organization, they don't have the communication to create a good food chip. Now, that has, that's my mission as a scientist in Wageningen. I am working in that triangle of technology, logistics, and connection. And I'm not doing that alone. I'm doing that in an international community. A community of scientists, fishermen, farmers, entrepreneurs, also governmental workers, etc. And we are communicating with each other, we are visiting each other, and so I come in Africa. And what do I see in Africa? I see that one of the three children, when he is the age of five years old, are stunting. Eh? Sub-Sahara Africa, <coughs> see for more. And so, because they are lacking proteins, minerals, Proteins. And if you don't have the proteins in the right moment of your grow, you never will become a healthy adult. Forever. So it just imagine what's happening su to such a population. You don't see it, but it's there. So do I have a mission? Okay, so I want to bring them proteins. Here, of course, there is an abundance of proteins. But it will take a long time to get that protein to the poor. So perhaps if we look to Africa, we see a lot of sea around it. <coughs> and that sea, there are yeah, there is algae, seaweed, fish in it. And that I will bring, want to bring to Africa interior. So that's a distance, and we ne I need preservation. And already for a long time, for ages, we use salt and sun to preserve. It's cheap and fast. Salt and sun. And fishermen are using that salt on board to preserve the fish, to get less spoilage by microorganisms and parasites. And we are eating that. That's that pickled and soothed herring in Scheveningen. Or we can dry it, then we get the stockfish from Iceland. But in other parts of the world, like in Indonesia, they are living on dried fish. But there's a problem with the dried fish. The surface of the fish has to absorb the sunlight. And it takes three days to dry the fish. And sometimes it's not dried completely, so it's still spoiled. Now, as an international community, had we worked together to do it better. And we create new dryers. And this is an example. This dry can dry within one day, sunny day. It's costing less than 10 euro, because 40% of the people are living of less than one dollar per day. But, and it's just made of local wood and plastic film, transparent and black, but, it's an enormous size. It's about 20 times this size here. And that makes a difference. And also we created more dryers. And because this is, takes more investment, we need a community to invest. Now, if I look to this, then the most striking thing for me is that we have a real connection together. 
And in that connection, we innovate, we implement it, we make real things happening in the world to conquer food scarcity. And that brings me to my philosophy. That connection, that gives, makes the difference. And that's what I call my theory of the power of emergence. And you all know it when you are brainstorming. Then you see that you are giving your unconditional contribution and see what's happening. You got new ideas. Now, that unconditional contribution is essential. And that connection. If we are really connected, then new things happen. And in, but in that connection, we are contributing to a system that's larger than we are. Because together, we are coming to a level of emergence, em emergen emergence that we call, for instance, mankind. And it has its own natural laws. It has its own intelligence. Ha, and evolution or revolutions are created by mankind. Man mankind. It's com coming above our imagination. It's coming above our own ratio. And because of that, we can create new things. So we don't have to be pessimistic. If you are really coming together, new things happen, for sure. But we have to be connected. But also on a small scale, it happens. For me, I was quite energetic, sporting in the former days, two years ago. And a little bit too bold. And then happens accidents. And this was a serious accident. And I have bo broken my back also. And I was immobilized for several months, completely immobilized. Still, I'm standing here in front of you. Okay, I still feel pain, but, but I'm recovered. That's the power of emergence of my body, because cells are coming together in a body, like that bodies are coming together in that <laughs> school of fishes and create new possibilities. And my friends has helped me without knowing what they are doing. They have helped me beyond their own ratio, beyond <coughs> awareness. But they have helped me tremendous. So, if you think the Club of Rome, will there be an apocalypse in 2030? Then I know my limits. As my daughter said, when, I, when she was coming to the hospital, she said, And Dad, do you understand now your limits? <laughs> well, yeah, I accept them, I accept them, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm also very optimistic. And I'm sure there will be no apocalypse after 2030. Because if we are connected together, and are unconditional contributing, and, that will, and you will feel the urgency of that, it's coming. Then, we all together will create a new balance between resources and limits. And there will be food for all, anytime. <coughs> but of course, of course, then we have to feel that urgency for emergence coming together. It's for us and for our children. Thank you.